hello guys good day and welcome back to my channel lolita stitches it's so good to have you here so this is what we we will have at the end of today's tutorial this tutorial is a continuation of the palazzo we made in the last video today we'll be making the shed part and this is what we're going to come up with as you can see it came out so lovely and so nice this is a shed palazzo with color button down shirt with collar palazzo and can you see that can you see the button can you see the band and it even has pockets at the sides okay so that is the pocket space so it came out so lovely if this is what you would like to learn then let's get right into work okay guys good day and welcome back to my channel lolita stitches it's so good to have you back to my returning subscribers you guys are the best and if you are checking out this channel for the first time you're welcome so today we are going we are continuing with um, the shirt how to make a shirt jumpsuit in the previous video we learned how to make the palazzo pants which is the down part of this um, dress but Today now, we'll be learning how to make the shirt part, which is the upper part of the dress, okay? So now, I have my fabric on fold, as you can see. And um, the full length of my clients, like I said in the previous video, is 63 inches. So we went ahead to subtract the half length from the full length, which is 19 inches. 63 minus 19 gave us 44. So we used that 44 for the palazzo part. Then for this upper part, I'll be making use of that remaining 19. And this dress is going to have um, a band, 2 inches wide. So we are going to subtract the band from... So I'm going to subtract the band from the 19 inches, which will give us 17 inches. Now we are working with the 17 inches, plus 1 inch for seam allowance, that will give us 18 inches. And I have 18 inches here okay so this is it for the front what I did let me separate this what I did this is the front part okay so I marked 1.5 inches for my button allowance and I ruled it into a straight line okay that is what I did here so I folded it so that I can place the front on the back okay just like this so I'm using a uh, I'm using office pin to just secure it so like this and I'll go ahead and place this front on the back this is it for the back piece the back piece is going to be two inches longer than the front okay so for the front remember we have 18 for the back we have 20 it's going to be two inches longer than the front because of the shoulder so now I'll place, remember I've already folded my button allowance. So I'll place the front on the back like this. So this is the two inches for the back. So this is the two inches with which the back will be longer than the front. Now to start, before we start placing our measurements, I'll just drag this up. And make sure it's equal with the back and I'll mark our shoulder slope which is one inch okay I'll take one inch for my shoulder slope right there and I'll roll it into a straight line connecting it to to this part okay just like this I hope you can see that so this is the first thing to do and I will trim it. Just like this, okay? So I will trim it. Then I can now take it down. Right. So the next thing to do, now that I have trimmed out the shoulder slope, is to place the back over the front like half an inch the back slightly overlapping the front like this with let's say half an inch just like this 
Okay, you place it like this. I'm going to secure it with a pin. Okay, just like that. Now do the same for this place. Now the back is slightly overlapping the front like this. So now to determine the quantity of fabric to put on fold, okay? You use the biggest circumference of the upper part of your client. The biggest circumference in this case is the waist, not the bust. Our bust is 38 and the waist is 40. So it's the waist you are going to use now to determine the quantity to put on fold. So that is at 40 divided by 4 will give me 10 plus 1.5 same allowance, 11.5. That is what we'll be using. Then remember for the 1.5 plus the 1.5 inch for button allowance, that is 13 inches for front alone. Then um, 11.5 for back. I hope you understand that. So now we can start placing our measurements. So from here now, I'll measure half of our armhole. Our armhole circumference is 22 inches, okay? So half of that will give me, I'm taking 10 inches because when I curve it, I will have what I want. When I do it like this, I will have 11. Half length is... 17 plus 1 inch for seam allowance, we have 18, and that is what we have here, okay? So now let's move over to, so now I'll place my tape, remember the button allowance is already on fold, so I'll place my tape here to get the half of the shoulder, uh, half of our shoulder measurement. Our shoulder measurement is a set, is a 16 inches, 16 divided by 2 will give me 8, plus half inch, joining allowance i have 8.5 so i'll mark that here 8.5 here and i'll rule it into a straight line can you see that so i have my 8.5 here and i'll just give it a curve for the arm or curve can you see that? So this is it for the ammo curve. Then remember the front ammo is always deeper than the back ammo. So I'll go in by let's say 0 0.75 inches deeper. Okay, like this and I'll blend it in when I get to this part. So this is it for the front arm O, and this is it for the back arm O. I hope you understand that. So now let's move to the neck region. The next circumference of my client is 16 inches, the round neck. You take your tape and measure the round neck. I'm working with 16 inches here. So let's make use of 2.5 inches for the neck width. 2.5 inches for the neck width, then 3 inches for the neck depth. Kindly subscribe to this channel if you have not, and uh, remember to click the like button and feel free to share this video. Download it so that you can watch it to get uh, any part you do not really understand. So here yeah, now you just cut this part a bit, okay? So now we want to check to see if our we want to check to see if we have um, 16 inches. So what we'll do now, you take your tape like this. So we divide 16 by 2, that is 8. We want to see if we have 8 inches. Take your tape like this. Like this. Okay. So we're almost there, but this is not 8. So we'll just extend our neck 
So let's say 3.25. That's a little bit extension. 3.25, okay? So we we'll use 3.25 for the neck depth and 2.5 for the neck width. So we're going to check again. So you take your tape like this from our 3.25. So you take your tape like this and you curve it like this, like this. Can you see eight inches? So that is 16 divided by two. When we open it, it will be eight. So we can go ahead and cut the neck. So when you want to cut, please, you put your scissors in this space okay there is a space here remember we are folding the the front remember we are folding the back on top of the front so you cut here please don't cut together don't make that mistake you cut insert your scissors to this space and gently cut like this okay follow the chalk markings like this So if you notice now, can you see, this is what I have. So now let's impute our measurements on this um, arm hole line that will also serve as the chest line. You impute quarter of our bust. Our bust measurement is 38. 38 divided by 4 will give me 9.5 plus 1.5 seam allowance. I have 11 inches and I will mark that. Then on the waistline, I told you our waist is 40. 40 divided by 4 will give me 10. 10 plus 1.5 seam allowance, I have 11.5. I'll mark that here and I'll connect. I'll connect the waist, the bust to the waist, just like this, okay? So now we can go ahead and cut this out like this. So when you are cutting this up outside, Cut the back arm off first, please. So you cut the back arm off first. Don't trim the back arm off with the front. Cut the back arm off first. Can you see that? So now I can separate the front from the back. Then I'll now trim out the front ankle like this. I hope you understand. So this is it. So it's time to cut out the so it's time to cut out our sleeve. For us to know what to cut, you place this gently like this again. Then you take your tape and measure. Okay, remember, I told you around ammo is um, 22. Here we have 24. So we even still have extra one inch to hold it for our allowance. So here we have 12. That is what we'll be using to cut our sleeve. Okay, so there is a secret I want to tell you about um, back um, waist. You see, the back waist, shoulder to waist for the front is always different from the back because there is no bust at the back. So what we'll do now to avoid unnecessary fold at the back, we're just going to trim out one inch, okay? from the back come here mark one inch like this and from here you connect it to the waistline like this okay this is very important don't miss the step is to avoid unnecessary fold at the back and you just trim it like this okay this is it for 
this is a, that's a secret okay now let's move over to the sleeve i'll just set this aside okay so for the sleeve now to so also determine the quantity of fabric to fold for sleeve is very simple mm -hmm. divide your around that more i told you it's 22 divide that by 2 which is 11 okay that's what you use to determine the quantity of fabric to put on fold and here i have 11 the length of our sleeve is 13 inches i'll be turning the sleeve with a black material at the edge so i'll just be making use of the exact sleeve length our sleeve length is 12 inches okay i'll have i will add just one inch for the joining at the up and down so i'll make it 13 okay 13 for the sleeve length and from here now i'll come down by five inches for to achieve the sleeve curve so from here i'll just make, draw an inverted s like this and I want to check if it's up to the 12 inches. Can you see that we have our 12 inches? So I'll just mark that right here. Then here I will build a round sleeve. Round sleeve is 12.5. 12.5 divided by 2 will give me 6.25 plus, um, let's say, 1.5 inches. For the seam allowance i have eight so let's just leave it like that and i'll connect it like this so this is it for our sleeve let me trim it out so i've got the sleeve and this is what i have okay i have two of this then i'm just going to give it a little notch here this will be for the center so Okay, so this is what we have. I'll just um, cut this. I'll just cut this uh, button, button allowance open. Just like this. This is what we have for the front. And this is the sleeve. And um, this is the... the lower part of the pants okay so we are gradually coming to the end of the video to cut the band to cut the band i'm going to rule out a straight line just like this this is on fold because this is for the back okay so now i'll mark out remember i told you we'll be making use of We'll be making use of two and a half inches for our band height, okay? Two and a half inches for the band. But here now we'll mark four inches first because we're not cutting uh, the regular band. Okay? And whatever we have for the waist length, whatever we have for our waist measurement is what we'll use here, which is... um. 11.5 here that is what we'll mark also so 11.5 for the width and it's on fold okay so i i marked four inches four inches four inches i'll rule that into a straight line from here i'll go up by one inch can you see that and i'll blend that one inch into this line like this can you see that what's the midpoint of 11 and a half that would be 5.75 okay so i'll blend it like this i hope you can see what i'm doing so i'll blend it like this then i'll start measuring Three inches let's make use of 2.5 inches for the band height so together with uh, the turning and the seam allowance we'll add one inch that will be 3.5 so you mark 3.5 here don't, don't just cut a straight band human body is not straight so 3.5 like that 3.5 
3.5 okay so you mark that like this and we can go ahead and trim out the band okay we'll be needing So can you see, let's check, we have our 11.5, that is what we need, and go ahead and trim it out, okay? So we'll be needing two of this, so I'm just going to cut uh, four, four pieces of this, two for the front, then uh, two for the back. So, this is it. These are what we have for our band. If you, as you can see, this one is cut on fold. This will be the band for the back. I will cut another one that will serve as the lining. Then, these are the ones for the front. Can you see it's cut opened because of the because of the shirt okay so we're going to use cut another piece to turn it in and that is it thank you so much guys thank you for watching to the end if you find any value in the video remember to give me a thumbs up click the like button and if you are yet to subscribe kindly do that so that is it on how to call a shirt jumpsuit so thank you so much guys I'll couple it and I'll show you the outcome. Click the link in the description box so that you watch my video on how to make a shirt color. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. All right, guys. So this is what we have at the end of the day. Can you see how beautiful it came out? So after I was done coupling it, this is what we have. Can you see the palazzo parts? That, so that's the full length of it. Can you see? Everything came out so nice. Thank you so much for watching. I am, I am very grateful. Remember to subscribe if you have not done that. And I will see you in my next one. So I will drop a link on how to cut uh, a shirt collar. You can also click on that link and watch how to make it. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in my next one. Keep loving all this. That's the pocket. Yeah, so...